Hi, I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to my 58th video in my journey through the real book. Thanks for joining me here. Hopefully it's your journey through the real book as well. This is Chelsea Bells by Steve Swallow. Steve Swallow is an electric bass player, started out presumably on acoustic. I know he played some early recordings on acoustic in the early 60s, but uh, switched to electric fairly soon after that and got really famous playing with Paul Blay, the I guess you could say avant-garde, leaning pianist, and um, uh, made a name for himself in the Boston area. And that's where the Chelsea of this title comes from, presumably. Um, it, it, it's the area of Boston. And in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a circle of musicians that included Chick Corea, Steve Swallow, uh, Pat Metheny, Gary Burton, um, hanging around, you know, early 70s. And, and to, and they would um, uh, all play with each other, mainly in Gary Burton's group. You know, Chick got famous in Return to Forever and, and left, moved out to the West Coast, but um, the other stayed in Boston for a while. And um, some great music came out of it, unconventional music. And this is probably one of those tunes that you probably were going through the real book at some point and played a couple chords. Is this? It doesn't make sense, and then you just sort of kept flipping the pages. You know, I, I know I did that for years, but um, but Steve Swallow is a formidable musician, and at a certain point, I decided to get to know his music a little bit um, better. And a friend of mine had studied bass with him and said, you know, let's let's play some of these things. You know, by by he said my teacher. So I said okay. And uh, there's basically four stages that I can identify playing a tune by Steve Swallow or something like this. The first one is you play the chords, and like I. Um, just described, you're saying, what the heck is that? Does that make sense? And then, really, he goes here, and then... And then he went there, and then there's this weird chord, and then, you know, A major 7 sharp 11 over D sharp. What is that? You know, and, that's the first stage, just like, what the heck is that, to paraphrase an old Steve Martin comedy routine. And then the second stage is, um, from my experience, you play it and, and you listen to his recordings and you say, oh, there, there is some logic to that. Okay, he's going from here. That's a beautiful sound. And now, oh, the, the melody's going down a step and the bass line's going up a whole, a half step. And then, so there's this contrary motion. I see what he's doing. And then he goes to a kind of surprise chord there. I got it. Okay. And then later on, from listening to his recording, there's these sort of uh, um, relationships by a fourth. Or a fifth in that case. And then here. And then later on. Sort of calm. I don't know if these were church bells or what kind of bells in, in Chelsea, but it's, a, it's an area near Boston, right outside of Boston. And, um, you know, he's evoking something. It's a beautiful tune. The third stage is where you actually can play it. It's like, oh, okay, I get it. And that's, you know, this chord here. Maybe it uh, has the sharp 11 because that's what's in the bass. And then the melody moves down there. I got it. And then it goes somewhere totally different here. I got it. Okay, it's starting to make a little bit of sense and has some sort of form that um, I'm getting used to hearing. My ear training is kicking in, right? I'm getting used to how these, these chords sound and everything. I can improvise over a little bit. The fourth stage is where you really make it your own. And that, that's the amazing thing that, you know, you can start with something that's like so in the distance, like, like you know, foggy, misty. It doesn't really make sense. I could just barely make out anything on this page. And then after a while, you go through these four stages, and it's internalized. Now, that's a pretty amazing, amazing um, thing with any type of music. Easier on some tunes than others. If, if something's like Confirmation, like Charlie Parker, it's similar to some other Charlie Parker tunes. So you play one, it helps you learn the others. Some other composers, Steve Swallow, isn't quite like that all the time, I find. So it's a journey, and um, uh, well worthwhile spending the time on a tune like this. So. Let's see how it goes. I'll just start with that first chord, go through the tune. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to play a little intro. I'm going to sort of do a church bell kind of thing.
you know, it was just that church bell thing, you know, Chelsea bells. I don't know what kind of bells he was talking about. Maybe it was orchestral bells in a band or something. But I was thinking of those church bells, sort of a little, you know, maybe an older suburb of Boston. I've never been to Chelsea, but I, I, assuming it's an old portion of town. And um, certainly maybe has some old buildings in it. And, um, you know, I just went with that sound at the beginning. Beautiful. Um, I love doing that in D flat anyway. And then it led me into the tune. It really influenced how I play the tune. So it's sort of a meeting of minds between the composer and, um, and actually three ways. And the whole jazz uh, tradition, composer, jazz tradition, and me or you as an um, uh, interpreter and expressing whatever you have to express through your music. That's really what it's about. Thanks for joining me here. And I'll see you in the next one, which, let's see, number 59, No More Blues by um, Antonio Carlos Chopin. Great bossa nova. See you then.